Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to project number eight of 25 beginner JavaScript projects. In this application, we're going to show you how to create this calculator. I created a website dedicated to the projects that we're going to be building in this series. You can find it at jsprospect.com. I also talk a little bit about the technologies that you need to become a web developer. And you can even access the tutorials directly from here. So if you wanted to watch this one, just click it and you can watch the tutorial here. If you want to learn more about these projects, you can click here. And I wrote a small article that talks about each project. You could even test the project out before you build it. So let's say that you wanted to test this one out. You can click here and you can test out the project. If you want to learn how to host your applications the way I did here, I wrote an article that shows you how to do it. So just click on this link and it's going to take you to this article, host your website for free with GitHub pages. And here I show you the steps that you need to take to host your application on GitHub pages. There's only four steps, so it's actually very simple to do. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna create a folder. Let's call it calculator. Let's open up Visual Studio. And let's open that folder. And let's create our three files. Index.html. Style.css. And script.js. Let's begin with our HTML. Let's click Shift 1 Enter. Let's link the CSS and the JavaScript file to the HTML file. And let me resize the window. All right, let's right click on the screen, open with Live Server. And let's begin here inside the body. We're going to start by creating a container. We know that we need a pair of div tags for that. So let's give this a class name of container. And within this container, we're going to create another container. So let's create another pair of div tags. And we're going to give this container a class name of calculator. This is where the input box and the buttons are going to go for our calculator. All right, let's begin by creating an input box. We can delete that. And we're going to add an ID so we can access the contents of these input box with JavaScript. All right, let's also give it a placeholder of zero. And let's create a space between the input box and our first row of buttons with a BR tag. All right, let's create our first button. This is going to be button number one. Let's give it a class name of BTN, short for button. And let's also add an onClick. So we're going to call in a function when the user clicks on this button. We're going to call that function press, and we're going to pass a1. Let's copy this three more times. Let's shift alt down, one, two, three. This is going to be button number two, three, and this is going to be the addition symbol. All right, let's change this to button number two, three, and addition symbol. And we're also going to add some styling to the addition symbol. So let's use style. And we're going to change the background color to FFB84D. All right, let's select these buttons including the br element and we're going to copy this three times let's shift alt down one two three so this is going to be button number four five and six and this is going to be the subtraction button
and we're going to change the color of this button. It's going to be FFCC80. This is going to be button 7, 8, and 9. And this is going to be the multiplication symbol. And let's also change the color of this. It's going to be FF E0 B3. This is going to be the decimal button. Zero. And this is going to be the clear button. For this one, we're going to call it a different function. We're going to call it erase. This is going to be the division button. And let's change the color of this button as well. This is going to be FFF5E6. And let's not forget to add the equal button. We're going to add that underneath here. Let's create another BR tag. Let's create another button. The equal sign there. Let's give this a class name of button equal or BTN equal for short. And we're also going to call in a function when the user clicks on this button. This one we're going to call equal. All right, let's remove any spaces we have here. So our HTML is nice and neat. And that's going to be it for part one. All right, let's begin with the CSS. We're going to start in the body. We're going to add overflow hidden, but I'm going to comment this out so you can see what it does when I uncomment it before we're done with our CSS. All right, let's change the background color. I'm going to use linear gradient and I'm going to go with color F4, F4, ED, and white. All right, for the container, we're going to add a border to help you see the changes that we're making here and let's begin by changing the width to 95 percent let's make the container the size of our window let's also use margin auto to place the container in the center and let's turn this container into a flex box all right now let's place the contents within the container in the center and let's also use align item center to place it in the middle of the screen. And actually, I could already show you the overflow hidden. You see this? So I don't want to have this because it's not necessary. So if I uncomment this, it's going to remove that. So that's what that's doing. For the calculator container, let's also add a border. And let's change the width to 370 pixels. Let's use margin auto to place it in the center. And let's give it round edges with border radius. Not too much, just two pixels. Let's change the background color. I'm going to go with F2, F2, F2. And I'm also going to give it some padding. So on the top, I want 15 pixels. On the right, another 15. On the bottom, I want 20 pixels. And on the right, I want 20 pixels. Let's also give it a box shadow. I'm going to go with 0 pixels, 2 pixels, 4 pixels, and 0 pixels. Let's go with the color of black, but let's hover this. And we're going to go with the RGBA of 0 0.5. And let's actually remove this border 
we're not going to need it anymore. I just wanted to show you what we were doing there, and that was going to help us see that. All right, for the user input or for the input box, we're going to change the box sizing to border box. And let's give it a width of 100%. We wanted to take up the entire container there. Let's also give it a padding so we can make it a little bit taller. And let's go with 40 pixels, top and bottom, and five pixels left and right. Let's change the background color. For this one, I'm gonna use white smoke. And let's use text align right because usually calculators they have the text over here on the right they don't have it on the left for the direction we want the direction to be traveling from left to right so as soon as the user clicks on a button it's going to say like three if they tap a four it's going to say now three and four if we don't use this then if the user clicks on a three it's going to say three and if they click on a six it's going to say six three which is not what we want so go ahead and try it without direction ltr so you can see what that's doing all right outline we want to take it off and we also want to take off the border that way it looks nice and clean like that For the buttons, we're going to change the width to 24%. Let's give them a height of 45 pixels. And let's also give them round edges, not too much, just one pixel. And let's take off the border. Let's also take off the outline. So right now, if we click it, you see that outline, we're going to take that off. So now when we click it, it doesn't do that anymore. Let's also use margin top because currently the buttons are too close together. Let's separate them by three pixels. And let's also change the color to white smoke. All right, let's take care of the equal button. It's going to be pretty much the same as the button so we're just going to copy this shift alt down but this is the button equal button the only difference is going to be the width we're going to give this a width of 99.2 percent and let's also give the buttons a hover effect So we're going to change the background color. I'm going to go with the RGBA value of 128, 128, 128, 0 0.1. So now when we hover these, they have this cool hover effect. All right, let's see what this looks like. It looks pretty good. Let's just make sure that it looks good when we look at it in a phone. So let's go to responsive design testing. Let's copy this, paste it here, click enter, and everything looks good at 480 and up, but at 320 and 240, we need to make some changes here. So we're just going to make the width of the buttons a little bit smaller. That way they can all fit in their respective row. All right, so let's add a media query for... 480 pixels let's change the width of the button I'm gonna go with 23.4 percent only for these buttons this this buttons totally fine so as you can see it's already kind of fixed there and I noticed right now as I'm doing this, this looks fine. But for the original project, I had a note that at 
320 pixels. I also wanted to change the width down to 23%. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, even though I don't really see a problem there right now. So let's just shift alt down to copy this. And we're going to change this to 320 pixels here. And we're going to change this to 23%. All right, let's look at it one more time. All right, that looks a lot better. That's going to be it for our CSS. Don't forget to remove the border there. All right, let's knock out the JavaScript. We're going to start by getting access to the user input. Let's store the user input in this variable user input, and we're going to get access to it by get element by ID. We gave the input box an ID of user input. And we're also going to create a variable. We're going to call it expression. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a moment. All right, remember when the user clicks on a button, they're calling on a function called press. So let's create that function. And we have something coming in. We're going to grab that with num. And we're going to add that num that's coming in to our expression variable that we just created. So if the user enters a six, for example, then that's going to come in through here. We're going to add it to expression. And if they enter a plus, the plus is going to come in through num. And now it's going to be six plus. So that's how we're going to grab the user input and concatenate it into this expression variable. So once we have it in our expression variable, we have to put it on the input box. So we're going to set the value of the input box. In this case, we have it stored in this variable user input. We're going to set it equal to expression. So now when we click on this, it's going to show up here. If we don't include this, it's not going to show up up here. All right, so we have that taken care of. Now let's take care of the equal function. So when the user clicks on this, we actually get the answer to that. So we called that one equal. When the user clicks on the equal button, we're going to call that function. And we're going to get the answer to that expression by using the built-in function eval. All we have to do is pass it the expression. So if the expression says 3 plus 3, eval is going to solve it. It's going to say 3 plus 3 is 6, and it's going to put it into the input box. So it's going to say 6 up here. All right, let's try that. 6 plus 6 equals 12. But notice what happens when I click on this button. This shouldn't be here anymore. This should get erased, and I should only see the 3. So let's make sure we clear the input box before we move on. All we have to do is set the expression variable to an empty string. Now let's try it again. 3 plus 3 and equals six now when i click on a button the six disappears and we see the two all right now we want to create the clear function so when we have an expression whatever we want to delete it we want to click on this button and we want that to get taken off the input box so let's create the function erase of course this gets called when the user clicks on the clear button and this is actually very simple we're just going to set the expression equal to an empty string. And we're also going to change the value of the user input box. We're going to set it equal to the expression. All right, let's try it again. 2 plus 2 equals 4. Let's click on this. And that turns into a 0. And that's how you create a calculator. I'll see you guys in the next project.